Hey, because we'll send you this I Outfit Rick t-shirt. To enter, all you have to do is go by any location of Central Bank throughout North Alabama, simply follow the instructions, fill out the entry form, send it back to us, and join in the fun every week. It's something extra on 31 Eyewitness News. Eyewitness something extra with a five-day forecast you can see. exciting action of your University of Alabama's Crimson Tide football. The Bear Bryant Show is brought to you by your local Coca-Cola bottler. Have a Coke and a smile. And by the crisp, fresh, golden flake family of snacks. Now let's take a look at this week's game, Alabama versus Georgia Tech, with comments by Coach Paul Bear Bryant and me, Charlie Thorne. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome once again to the Bear Bryant Show for the 1980 season. And, uh, Coach, I believe we start our 22nd year or the good people at Coca-Cola and Golden Flake. I stole Coca-Cola. I want to thank people. And Coach, I'm going to get these out where we can eat them, too. Okay, good. And Coach, sir, if I have this back, we, we appreciate it very much. Of course, my purpose of my being present is to comment occasionally and, uh, of course, to familiarize you with, uh, with the players. That's the whole thing they do to play, and we'd like for you to get to know them better. And uh, we're tremendously proud of the team and, and proud of our coaches for winning yesterday, and uh, uh, particularly so in that terrifically hot weather we had out there. And I'd like to explain this, too. The reason we played the, the game in the afternoon, or I recommend it we played in the afternoon, the last time we played out that night, I believe it was against Nebraska, and uh, we had some elderly people uh, my age, that we injured and mugged and so on and so forth, and and we just don't think it's worth it. And of course, it's tremendously hot yesterday, and it made it difficult for the fans, made it more difficult for the players. On the other hand, I, I think the players hung in there pretty well. Uh, before the game started, my own thinking was that if we played a lot of people, and if our kicking game held up, and uh, with Georgia Tech, I figured we had a few more folks than they did that. If our kicking game held up and we stayed within a touchdown, we could beat them in the fourth quarter. And I still think that. I think that uh, we did play a lot of people. And uh, Tech hung in there very well, and they, they, they fought all the way down to the to the wire. And I think that's a compliment to them. I mean to compliment them. Uh, it was a real big game for us because uh, we have a winning streak going, but the big thing is we get by that when we have a week off. And we haven't been doing very well in some areas, and we hope to straighten that out and improve. And, and to win, I think it should give our young people some confidence or help their confidence, to help us uh, develop their confidence to where they can continue to win, uh, get better and continue to win. And it was, it was a tremendous game for Georgia Tech. Uh, if Georgia Tech had beaten us yesterday, of course, it was, it was the alumni, everybody would have rattled around them. It would have helped the recruiting program. It would have helped everything. I think they're going to do well anyway because uh, I think Bill Curry is an excellent coach. He's a class person. I, I think they'll do well anyway. I, I was proud of our defense for not letting them score uh, anything but the field goal. And, of course, I was proud of our offense for uh, uh, putting a few points on the board. On the other hand, in all fairness, uh, uh, our defense uh, didn't play as well as people think they did or they think they did because it didn't intercept the pass and the, their, their passer was a great passer and their kicker was a great kicker never doubt that but we didn't intercept the pass we didn't sack the quarterback at times in the first half i think once or twice the second half and we arm tackled a lot now, i'm proud of the defense but uh it's right on the field and i hope they listen and i hope they look at it and our offense uh, was like it's been in practice all the time they were trying real hard but we didn't execute well we did things that you don't do and then win big football games, but uh, that's no fault of theirs. We, I hope that uh, next week we can get our injured people back, and that should strengthen us a little, and we have time to, without rushing it, to, to work with our people and to pick out the ones to know now pretty well who's going to play and, uh, and help them help themselves to improve. Uh, we brought a lot of people up here that we didn't play. We knew we weren't going to play, and we came. 
We brought some that weren't ready to play. We just brought them as a reward. We brought others that we were trying to make a decision, or I'm trying to make a decision, on whether to play them or not, or whether to hold them out, whether to have another year. In other words, it's ridiculous to take a young man out there and play him two, three minutes a uh, game, and I've done it a billion times, and, and wind up his senior year as a great player. If he had another year, he'd be an All-American or something, and we hope to eliminate that. The best thing in the game, of course, uh, from a defensive standpoint, in my opinion, was stop him on the goal line when we were down there. They really would by it look like an Alabama team there. And the only the, on the offense, of course, the, the 80 yard drive late in the quarter, fourth quarter when they were tired and and Adam Gray took them and, and moved them as, as 80 yards and I think 11 or 12 plays, maybe 13 or 14 or more, the better because they had to do some execute, executing to do that. And I got a real big bang kick and thrill out of uh, of James Mallard uh, catching the touchdown. Of course, a lot of people had a hand in that. They had to protect the lineman, and Jake had to throw it to him. But uh, uh, James is a real fine youngster, a class young man, and he's caught a jillion football in practice. He'd never been in a game. And you go out there in front of all those people and, and made a very difficult catch. It should have been an easy catch to begin with, but made a very difficult catch. He had to turn to catch the ball, and... I've dropped a jillion like that. But anyway, I'm, I'm proud for him. I know he's real happy. And we hope to get our edge people back. And right now, Charlie, before I mumble and gum around here too long, let's get started with something. Okay, Coach, well, we'll be back for the first quarter of action following this word from Coke and Golden Place. You know one of the best things about living in the South is eating in the South. And nobody makes fried chicken like we can. Potato chips neither. Golden Flake here is our kind of potato chip. Made the way we like them, crisp, light, with our kind of crunch. Southern fried crunch. And can't nobody, nowhere, beat Southern fried crunch. Shoot, no. Golden Flake, the only chips for Southern fried crunch. We interrupt this summer to bring you some of the refreshing smiles of winter. Very little wind as a stadium yesterday, and uh, we're on the toss and chose to receive Major Ogilvy, and I want to say this to, uh, it's very difficult to make a block on a kick return now, and that's the way it should be because you have to block the other ways. But uh, Major Ogilvy played the entire game and ran from scrimmage one time, and that's ridiculous. That's full coaching, full quarterback, and full everything, and I do all of that. John Jake's running with football there. They had take just eight of us right early in the game. We're not getting off the ball. We're not doing anything. Jake's doing a real fine job. They're highly motivated. You see them cross there. They're, they're stunned as a sum, not a whole lot, but they're secondary. I tell you, they had a real fine secondary. They came up very well on the run, and they played the pass very well, as you will see later on. Bob Dash has snapped the front back. What are you up for this kicking it? Somebody got down there well. I can't tell who. I believe it was, it was uh, John Hill. They have a double wing back. What well, amounts to double wing back here? I think one is loud. And first I don't believe they block loud. They really didn't play him a great deal. But he's been injured, not in real good shape. And so is Warren Bragg. Not Warren Bragg, Brian Bragg. He's been injured and hasn't had a lot of work. And we, as a matter of fact, we didn't play anybody a whole lot. We played. I tried to count up last night. I think we played 62 people. So they would hold them there. They're going to punt formation, and he fumbled the football. That's Bragg who hits it first. Brian Bragg's mobile. Uh, Montgomery, the entire group is back there, and I believe Pine came up with it. Really. So it was a fumble. Tommy Wilcox was right. Yeah, Tommy just because his arm wasn't long enough. Exactly. We did a lot of arm tackling in the game, which I don't recommend. This is a real big break here. And Touchdown on first. Now watch the left tackle. You see Bob Caviac. He, he entertained his man. He didn't knock him over the center, but the man went in with him, and he just broke right off of Bob's back. There he is right there. Now, Ian, Bart Crowd had to turn out on that play. Uh, 
fired on any in any event there was a hole was cracked there and Billy Jackson jumped through for the score. Fifteen yard touchdown run. Dasher snaps his back, William for held it. Peter Kim from Korea by way of Honolulu kicked the extra point. Timmy Clark kicking off. He kicked it real high. Timmy, I didn't play him any at all. We didn't play him at Timmy at all. He was a little arm tackling here. Well, Simon brought Simon was our leading tackler on the kickoffs last year. He's a sophomore now from Montgomery. Bob Dash is our new snapper back. Well, yesterday, anyway. Real fine tackling there. I believe that E.J. Jr. got in the middle of him. That's the way he's supposed to play defense and not reach out to every arm. They got outside on us some that uh, people got some backs to get out there will hurt you. Our Harry pursuit, Nero was over. Our pursuit was excellent, I think, in the game. I think everyone was trying. And it was hot, I'm telling you. But actually, I don't believe our, I don't believe our, if any of our players got it. That was a great catch. Truly great catch for the tech man right in front of me there. Almost stepped on it, really. No one had been a close call like John Hanna and Jim Croft a few years ago against Tennessee out there. We, you might have noticed that we, uh, the first part of the game, then the old first half, he's playing too loose there, getting too much ground in front. We were in an unbalanced line and uh, a great deal. And we were Real we'll fine tackle for Brian. Yeah, Brian's a big man. Bless a great deal of the door. And if he can stay well, he should have a great year. Here's a fine defensive player. Who has a good defensive plays back there, too? Mike Clements. Mike Clements uh, had a... I happen to see uh, Lewis Campbell all there. He got up and did a great defense. And he's going to shoot this one, so I don't know the office. This is pretty early. And uh, they go to the field goal here. That's no good. And Clement graded very well and had a lot of bonus points. Pull out the backfield this time, and we get nothing so we don't block anybody. Tech does a real fine job. That's a better way of putting it. Now, you watch the line. You can tell where they're getting off on the ball. Now, watch the ball and see how they who wins going across that neutral zone. It'll tell you something. I thought our line got off fairly well then. Joe Jones? Excellent, excellent uh, effort out there. We barked about two, three more. Joe Jones running with the ball. Joe was one of our captains. He's from Alabama, uh, Georgia. They did a great job then, so we have to punt now. Willie Humphrey's kicking. Rob Dasher snaps it back. We fast caught the ball. We had a couple of men down there. Mark Nix is down. And Kenny Clark, I believe. Kenny Clark, we didn't play in the game because he had a broken hand. He broke it early in practice. He was able to kick off. He was really able to play. He's been practicing. I didn't feel like it's, uh, if we get another week to, to heal, he'd be better pass receiver. And we had some pass receivers. We had some new people playing that did very well. Uh, that was been in the game before. There was, there was five people standing around. Nobody going to the ball on that. Excellent play for the Tech people. And that quarterback can throw the football, I'll tell you that. I don't think they have right at this time. They will have, but I don't think they have any great running back. But Bill Curry will uh, we'll be getting some great effort there by somebody dropping off and making a tackle on the line. I think Richard Shin played pretty well, too. Carl Madonna, who was morning, he thought he did, too. That was a real fine play with Robert Jones from the Buffalo. Coach, that was Woody Lowe. I Woody mean, Lowe. Eddie, Eddie Lowe. Eddie, Eddie. I remember that from the stank. Or he went from the opposite side, not turning the Jeff Rowd until it made it in six yards to make that play. I saw him fall over somebody a couple of times, but he knew around. So real fine coverage in. Man in motion this time. Well, I guess it's not either. He come to sleep. Supposed to be a sweep. It looked like more of a slant. A sweep, you better start it wide and cut when you see daylight. The option play, and we pick it up. That's the rule number one in the book. Don't pick the ball up like that. Fall on you. End of the first quarter. End of the first quarter, and we're very fortunate not to get knocked loose from the ball there. The Alabama 7, Georgia Tech zipped, and we haven't gained an inch yet, I don't think. But the good Lord willing, we're going to do something.
Yeah. You need any help? Mm-mm. Want my Coke? No, no. Really, you can have it. Okay. Dick's Supper's where you find the best-selling cook in the ears. And you find plenty of these, too. Golden Flake Cheese Curls. These are the only cheese curls good enough for a gin dig like this. So they are the only cheese curls with Southern Pride Crunch. And that's the only crunch worth crunching. Have a crunch, Martha. <laughs> Golden Flake, the cheese curls with Southern Pride Crunch. Coach, at 7-0 uh, in the first quarter, and uh, I know uh, you were trying to play a lot of people at this time. Were you well, I was real, we were real lucky because if uh, the game had been, we hadn't gotten ahead. We probably wouldn't have substituted as a, as a team, but after we got ahead, I decided to just go ahead and substitute the entire team and, and make sure that they all got a lot of rest, and we did that, and then plus a few more extras than... Uh, and consequently, no one played too much. No one should have been fresh. Uh, but if the game had been, you know, back and forth, a real tough, I don't think I'd have had courage enough to. Uh, I don't think I, I would have done that. I'd have run them in there one or two, three at a time. But this was ideal for us to prepare for trying to improve, and I'm very thankful for that to get that opportunity. And uh, if we take advantage of it, I don't think. To my knowledge, and I didn't see Goose Tree this morning, but I don't think we had anyone injured. He did have uh, our little senior manager, who's a, a great one, and um, you don't know what managers mean in a football team. They do more work than all the coaches and sports subjects and people and everybody put together, but uh, a little Artie, Artie Klein was, uh, had some kind of an attack Friday night and had to be taken to the hospital, and he missed the game. So Artie, if you're listening in out there, we miss you, little buddy. And, let them get well and get back down and get to work. So it's just going in and out of the second quarter of action. They play a little kick, quick kick here. Mark Nix, I Mark think. Mark Nix. And Mark, in practice, has been getting a tremendous roll. He's got a pretty good roll there. Johnny has been getting a roll on down about the one. But we had third and real long. And let them put the ball up or take a chance. I decided to go ahead and quick kick it. They wouldn't be expected, and that'd be better in the front where you take a chance on being bad snap or block or run back. They run a trap play there. Bobby Jones made the tackle. I want to say hello to Coach Paul Burns. Great football coach, a great freshman, and of course a great friend of mine. He gave me a little talking to about this game beforehand. He always does, and I appreciate it. I see our pursuit is excellent there. John Nobody Morrow. Is trying. John Morrow from South Bend made the play. That number two is the real passion. Here's a great play here. Come up from uh, who's that, DJ? DJ, huh? He dropped off that little, little player thing, you know, and you get a good back clearing out there. That tailback ran down the middle and uh, Thomas Moore did it. Thomas Boyd, the fine linebacker, has to the speed. He's had problems with his back this year. And they interfered with our player there. The offense interfered with the defense. Of course, with the penalty, they go to losses down, because they wouldn't change the clock for a long time, and they finally did. It was Jeremiah Castillo. Jeremiah, I think, played well, too, in the game. He catches the punch later on. That was Major Ogilvy there. Major's younger brother Rye is doing fine, but uh, I am told we're going to talk about this lying me. We're probably going to lie out. So we have only to be a great player like his brother. I think he will be someday. That a great play with the tech man, defensive man. He had that dead spot there and didn't go to the end. The Tech man made an outstanding play to come over here. Here's Ryan, fine play with Jake. Ron Jacobs made an extra play with him. Not only now, the last instance, Hope was been over. He got to be horned out there on the sideline. He was injured during the game a little bit. 
There's a pass out to Jesse Bengos. And he was pretty much a quick move there. And he was be around pretty well. He was a freshman. He was only freshman to start it. Touchdown coming up this time. Line goes off the ball very well there. The line moves off the ball well. And great running with Billy Jackson. Great running with Billy Jackson. And Scott Allison. Stone. I believe Larry Brown. Steve Mott, they all move off the ball well. And, and they a chance to win. Just a little crack down the defense. They jump through. Peter Kim took this ball. It was well hit. They missed it to the left. 10 o'clock kicking off again. Into the end zone. Now that was a great, uh, a great hit. Uh, he ever made that throw at him, but he should have made the tackle, not just stick his arm out. Get him enough to go to make the tackle. John Morrow was in on that stop. John is seeing it from South Bend. Had Robbie Robert going from the Mopper. I think Robert makes him. I think all of them make some big plays. The quarterback gets outside, almost outside. We'll find play there in the rush. The over here on the right, which I think was Morrow again, hurt him a little bit, and they're kicking. Appreciate our new president, Dr. Glenda, coming by the dressing room yesterday. They go over and made the fair catch again. Alan Gray. Alan Gray in there, and they're real fine defensive play. Real fine defensive play with them. Both ends are out now. Full house back to it. Great quarterback. Alan slipped there. He still made a good run. If he was going under control, if he pushed that ball out, it might have gone wrong. That was too slow here. That was. That looked like it was too slow. Execution off. The mess is not there to come in. So we have to kick now, and they're fair caught it again, thank God. Back to pass, and they just keep passing. We don't get anybody down. We'll find catch and find pass. Excellent pass. To it, the position where our man could not get to it. Now, he has an acre out there. They're trying to complete that one. No excuse for that. Or we rushed him or something. That head get through out there at the game. I thought it was a football. Back to pass. Play action. Play action pass. And he caught the ball. A great catch for the tech. There's a next one to see. Just the middle there. But my grandson, Mark Tyson, is doing well. He ended the game Friday night. But that was a fourth and one, and he did not make it. No, fourth one. and one, they tried to make it on the quarterback sneak, as I recall. And I thought they made it, but he didn't. He put the rest on our receiver there. That's the way he's supposed to play football. Both ends out this time. John Hill carried for two yards. John doesn't look good running the ball. Doesn't look like he's running. He, he's going younger all the time. He's always going that way. Here's a fine run by Jake. Nice block for someone coming the outside out there. Oh, Joe Jones, coach. Joe Jones. Joe's one of our captains. He's from Georgia. Joe and Randy Scott. They were fine football players, fine people. John Hill has got 14 and a first down on the play. Real fine play by John. Somebody's already. There's Hill again up the middle. We'll ask back to you. We'll come this direction, play. Suppose we do. We don't. Everybody makes sure he's out of that play with us. Hit the companion play. It's the option. Jake is back to pass. He, he ran the body open. He had enough time to move on. Get the ball away, but he did an excellent job then running with it. And rattling off at the last instant, Major again. Thank heaven he got that. Major, I tell you, the good Lord with him, he's going to get the ball going in. Yeah. Here comes the touchdown pass from Jacobs to Mallard. It's just through the half. 
Jake did a good job getting rid of the ball. The man in the mustache there. You see, Mallet had to turn to catch the ball. See, you see the man coming to Jake there? He has to have a little something in his claw to stand around and throw the football. He just got it over the man's head. And that's the secret of throwing a long pass. If he's not wide open, get it over the defender. Just be sure you get it over the defender in the way. Receiver has a chance. If you don't get it over the defender, no one has a chance but the opposition. We had a mix up there. We didn't have the right formula. One of us, some of us thought it was in one formula, some thought it was in the other. That's very poor instructions on my part. It's starting the second half. We have a man down there walling around on the ground again. Just throwing yourself out there don't mean anything. Get in front of it and slow down to do what you have to do. I won the second half. We had to kick off. This is the last play of the game, uh, first half. End of the half, Alabama 19, Georgia Tech zip. Hey, Slim, tell it again. Oh, okay. I'm walking into the kitchen. The little breeze is easing through the curtain. I open up the refrigerator door. It's like January in there. And I look way in the back. Back behind the mayonnaise, I spy me an icy bottle of Coke. And I reach in. It's cold to the touch, almost frozen. And I pop the top. When that ice cold Coke hits the back of my throat. Coach Bryant, you know, it, I know the fans are always interested in what goes on in the dress room at halftime. And particularly right, actually, uh, the same thing every week. Uh, we have people at the press box, of course, and they beat the team in at the half. They get down early and get in and, and have some information on the blackboard when we get in there. And as soon as we settle down, well, then the defensive coaches will talk with the defense and they'll go with what has happened. They'll have it charted exactly what has happened, what they hurt us on, what they didn't hurt us with. And uh, we might throw out something, might add something, but uh, normally we throw out something, but they see what they've been doing and how to, to, to uh, combat it. And then the offensive coach is doing the same thing. And then normally offensively, uh, some people in the best box will have some things that we should be doing that we aren't doing, and we should throw out what we, some things that are not working. And by the time you get that done, why, normally the fish is back ready to go, but uh, that's that's what goes on in the it's low key though, really. Anyway. Oh yeah, it's low key. It's no hooper and the holler, no uh, no Rodney type, no Rodney stuff. <laughs> no, I'm not that bright. <laughs> but uh, it's important. It's important to get out there and what they have is is correct too, because uh, uh, actually, to be honest about it, in the past, I think we've uh, done a poor job. I won't say a poor job. We haven't done a great job of of adjusting until the half offensively. We we. We don't know what, enough about what's going on out there at the time when we got all our people, me and everybody else, watching it. And, but normally speaking, we'll come out the half and, and do a better job. And that's the test, really, of a good football team. The first few minutes of the second half, you can turn the game around. In this week's university feature, we'll see some of the many reasons for a special air of excitement on the campus this fall. <laughs> time to be at the University of Alabama. Our football team has entered its third national championship in a row, and its legendary coach is close to becoming the winningest coach in the history of the game. Our students are making contributions towards winning the battle for energy independence, learning by participating in research designed to make the best use of coal, one of Alabama's great natural resources, studying underground and surface mining, and using innovative techniques for maximum recovery of this important energy source. And University of Alabama students are learning in many areas from renowned scholars and artists. More than 17,000 students, a record enrollment, are learning and working to join the 100,000 graduates of Alabama's capstone of education. There are many winners right here in Tuscaloosa at Alabama's first university, the University of Alabama. We'll be 
be back for the third quarter following this important message from Coca-Cola and Golden Flakes. When we Southerners get together, it's a special way of being together, a time when hospitality really shines through. That's why we want the food to be so special, from the garden fresh vegetables to the Golden Flake potato chips. Oh yes, Golden Flake makes real Southern potato chips, crisp and light. Golden Flake's the only chips with Southern fried crunch. If you serve Southern hospitality at your table, serve Golden Flake potato chips, the only chips with Southern fried crunch. You know one of the best things about living in the South is eating in the South. Can't nobody make fried chicken like we can. Potato chips neither. Golden Flake here is our kind of potato chip. Made the way we like them, crisp, light, with our kind of crunch. Southern fried crunch. And can't nobody, nowhere, beat Southern fried crunch. Shoot, no. Golden Flake, the only chips for Southern fried crunch. We're kicking off the second half. And I said, there's a little more win the second half than it was the first half. Excellent kick there with Jamie Clark in the end zone. But no return. That's the place to put it. They got motion here, throw out quick screen, it bounced. If it was a lateral, it'd still be all right. But it was, I think in pretty good shape there. Turn back motion this side. Play action passes, of course, is just good to break up. That Mike Tucker breaking that one up. He almost intercepted it. As I said earlier, Mike played a real fine game. That's some arm tackling and a real fine running by their back. The third back takes through for the ball. The full back goes out and blocks the man. He's always in position to screen. The tail back goes down the middle. He becomes a receiver unless he has to pick up a linebacker. And they're really putting it up now. Out of bounds, thankfully, he's there because he's in a dead area. Double wing back now. I mean, they have four receivers they can get out in a hurry, and they have a great rush there. Jackie Klein. Jackie Klein and E.J. E.J. Jr. I think Klein turned into a good football player. It's a hard work. He's done an awful lot of hard work. Since he's done. Major Overby caught the ball in the crowd. He'll do that. Jake back to pass off play action again. Actually, uh, Jesse had his man beat. But the man on the other side, Jake, he's on the whole line, he pulled him in the middle a little bit. Right? The man on the other side came across who didn't have anyone over there. We should have someone in his area and made a great interception. So they take over now and have the ball again. They get outside, and there's Mike Kimmett tripped him up. Randy Scott was over there, and I was lying back there. Played very well then the end man. He was Jackie Klein. Klein again. He could run with the ball in, but the electric throw it on the ball. He was a draw play, he stopped that very well. Boyd and Scott. Boyd and Scott both to put the books on and run right, ran right into him. Yeah, still made a fine play there. That might have been an interception also. Sorry to learn that Rick Wingo had surgery up at Green Bay. He had a telegram yesterday from Martin Chair Star, and appreciate it very much. They have motion here now. And a draw play, and it didn't go very well. Mark Nick's running with the football. We found they left a little bit there and they didn't come down. Here comes a sweep, supposed to be a sweep. The halfback came up very like he's supposed to play. The cornerback turned it in. Fine running here by Jake. Excellent running by him in the form of football. Tech recovers. Shakedown, please. 
Mike Thomas. That's what we supposed to play him with Mike Thomas. He came up like an independent. He has much like that football as a receiver there. Brian, Brian Bragg. Brian Bragg. One young loss. Play at the game. I watched him, Brian. Only me. Tucker. Mr. Tucker made a fine play there. That, that gentleman can throw the football. You don't see many of them off target. And this one can kick it, too. This fine kick was cracked off by Lou Jeremiah's in there now. Yeah. Yes, sir. Jeremiah Castillo was catching the front end. It goes Charlie Williams. Charlie Williams, the Williams the best by Alabama, breaks out of there. That's Charlie's fast just for themselves, and they're all a little thing as well. He'll be a football coach. Alan Gray's a quarterback now. Just outside. I had Alan ran well yesterday. So did Ken Curley. Joe Carter, the person who started with. Joe oh, just hammered around pretty well here. We didn't end up blocking. Both of us out now. Fred off backfield. What's happening in there? Looks like a wrestling match in the middle. Shift into punt formation. We lined up a couple times yesterday in double wing. We're going to kick from that, son. We can get four receivers out in the hurry if they get 10 men up there. And we shifted into punt thin. From our regular formation. He's kicking for the flag and almost made it. They take it out of 20 now. Automatic touchback. Back back to throw and complete. He was a little off target then. That's one of the few times he was all day. It was a screen pass. Will played very well. Real fine playing. Gary De Niro uh, took the block at first. Good coverage then, too. They're kicking punt formation. We had the rush on. One man went too deep, though. Almost got a penalty. Now, I say he didn't handle this football. Of course, it's about 20 yards, maybe a little farther than that. But with the score like it is, and the ball kicked like it was, I think maybe he was right. On the other hand, he's in the wind. Might have been playing a little too deep. It was a nice block to the left half back then. That's Ken Cooley. He got outside for a few yards. That was Ken Simon that made the block. Cooley again got six yards on that play. Cooley from here, Birmingham, Simon from Montgomery. Cooley just ran around that guy there and took it on down there. He, he's a little pepper pot. He can move. He don't fool around. We run the big circle here and then pitches it, it out and the safety man has enough time to come all the way and make it. Got to go down the line, of course. He throws the ball behind Patrick Hill. Any Patrick can best one. He's another freshman. Uh, not best one. Yeah. Jasper, he's another freshman. So they take over now. Play action pass. He's being chased. He throws and he's almost on the set. I'm worried about now. They give them seven points. See, it brings it down there to where that's a piece of justice. That's a long tackle. He falls down with a great effort by Jackie Klein. Get a face mask on the play. And just take the first down. All those little things. See, it's what a championship team doesn't do. Excellent pass there. That he could. He just had a little crease in the secondary and he hit it. Fine running here. That's the best running I saw Tech back do all day. When he starts on that thing, that's something that we don't want to do that. I'm kidding, not kidding, don't do that. That's a real big play there with Boyd and Scott both in on it. At the end of the quarter, Alabama 19, Georgia Tech zip. Here are some cool sounds coming at you on a sizzling summer day. Oh, 
this stuff is where you find the best selling cook in the years. And you find pair of these too. Golden flake cheese curls. These are the only cheese curls good enough for a gin dig like this. Because they are the only cheese curls with southern fried crunch. And that's the only crunch worth crunching. Have a crunch, Martha. <laughs> Golden flake, the cheese curls with southern fried crunch. Coach, I'm, I'm not going to mention the fact that uh, someone on the set has a birthday this week, but I do want to mention that my wife has one, my little bride has one Tuesday, and my daughter next Saturday. Well, I want to mention that uh, we have people, uh, someone come down and go by. We haven't officially ever practiced where we wear pads. I think it's highly important. And every year we are fortunate enough to get the, the uh, the official Southeastern Conference official come down and talk to our squad. And Pitt's been doing it for years, and Gordon he retired, Pettis, yeah. Gordon Pettis. And this year, Bobby Skelton did, and he's one of our former players, and I appreciate it very much. He did an excellent job. But it's kind of, I don't know, coincidental with something we would take coming up here being our first game. And one of the big memories I have of all the time I've been in this business was over Tech in that 15 to 16 game. And uh, Bobby was playing quarterback and was backed up, I don't know, about the 15-yard line. And I sent in a play and told him to go a 12 or 16-yard circle. He didn't do it. He threw a little old flat thing, hit the tackle right, and bet if he caught it, he walked over a goal for a touchdown. Anyway, I took him out of the game. Had Pat Trammell left. Gooby Stout was already hurt. And I was sitting down with me and put my arm around him like I was hugging him. And uh, Bob, I remember that I shouldn't tell him, I told him, little man, you haven't played in your last game. You, you, <laughs> you'll never put that red shirt on again. I'll tell you something, dude, you do it. And about that time, Trammell got hurt. <laughs> I had to change my mind and put Skelton back out there. And we went on fourth down four different times and went on in to win the game 16 to 15. But I, that taught me a letter. Don't ever say never. But uh, we had thing I've enjoyed very much this fall. We've had quite a few uh, of our former players come by and was practicing. A lot of them gotten too fat to face that sun out there, but I, I'm exaggerating, of course. A lot of them came by and we appreciate that very much. You go ahead with you. So let's get on into the fourth quarter of play. We'll pick up with the goal line stand, too, that we're... It's third down now. They piled up there real well. Scott Quarter, Holman was there. Quarterback that happened to keep it, then he walked in out on the other side. you got to keep that in mind, that iffy, that iffy, unexpected. Expected, unexpected. He kept it that time, and goes through right there in the middle of the final chase. Jimmy Gray for a long six. Jimmy. Now, DJ back there, the first man again. He gets him, he can't throw the ball, he gets him around the arms, the ball, and everything. Great play by EJ Jr. But now they go for the field goal, and I don't think we had anybody going at that like the life of death. Like he's going to win the game, on it. But they missed it anyway. Billy Jackson on the carry. Gets Billy Jackson doesn't have much chance on. there. And Don Jacobs runs a quarterback sneak to five yards, I guess. And the eyes to motion, and the fastest snug. Those are the colors in motion. It's fine running with Lenny Patrick here. He had decent twist in the turn to get out there, and he has to have real fine speed, too. Here comes over there in motion again. Unless they're going to throw the ball to him out there, some of other keep him in the backfield. And they fight Billy Jackson down pretty well. That Mitch Perkins. That's, that's uh, Billy Jackson. Tech doesn't give up. Tech is throwing in. They had plenty of chances to throw in, and they didn't. We're back there now. Nice block. Who picked that man off? Okay. That a real Couldn't fine tackle by the tech man, too. So you see that our pass protection, we need to work on that. They had the rush on them, make an extra effort to get there. So when we couldn't get in the field and a six, five yard punt. They take over now after a long punt. Funded that the tech man falls right on Fall right on it. That, he was knocked loose from it, really. He never had control of it and was hit. Back to pass again. That's plenty of time. There's his man. Looks like he's out to practice early. Knocked out of bounds by Jim Bob Harris. 
fun with the football, and you know, I'm not so sure that that ball didn't stay in there all the way. This is, think, the longest one they had for the was trap play. So the Wilcox made the tackle at the 21-yard game. That's kind of ridiculous that they have a 21-yard game. Flying and bow, I don't stop there for three yard game. Now, this is play it's just thrown up for grab, that play there. We have it, everybody has it. Just looks and throws it in the corner and the man is back like he's going out and turn it in. Where am I casting? We're going for the field goal now. We only have one man rushing. Well, he's really deep on the only man that should be free, but they make the field goal. That's a 19 to 3. Now, if they get a touchdown now, we'll be back to the Trouble. Great kick by their man. A real fine kick from out of the field of play. That's the safest place to put him, of course. Will Carter up there. Will Carter running. Uh, Adam Gray, the quarterback now. Full out backfield. That was a. Uh, he fooled me. I thought he'd give him the ball. And, Rounds up for now, he gets to Patrick. Patrick did a good job making the two yards. He made on the play in the first time. A real fine play. I mean, I didn't really responsible for it. I thought he'd already given the ball up myself. He kept it. I think it's our 80-yard drive. Both ends out this time. Charlie Williams on the break. Charlie it. Williams breaks it. That's a good block, too. He had a nice hole to run there. The entire team, I particularly happened to Adam Gray, who picked it, came and marched him 80 yards. Mitch Fine Ferguson. block, the left tackle in the guard, that sealed inside off the end, and Mitch broke down through there. Check the weight and bars here, we don't block the bottom, we don't get any ground. Sorry, Williams had his jersey to him, and he had to get out. That was a real excellent play there by Alan Gray, fine running. He sidestepped the man, got a loose and the man back in the backfield start with him. Very difficult circumstances, sidestepped the man up there. Williams. They're on the move now. The line's coming off the ball pretty well. Alan Gray wide has jumped back inside and been moving around the over a little bit. Comes the option player, and I well, it wasn't a nice block either. It should have been. I thought Patrick made a block there. He made it with the Carter. Carter, he's a freshman from Rockville, Mississippi. Touchdown, Carter. Here comes touchdown. Full off backfield, two tight ends. Here comes the option play. He keeps it. Now, that time... They did a real fine job. But our halfback blocked his man, too. Mm-hmm. And Patrick. So Bob Dash is snapping back. Woody Humphrey held it. Peter Kim, 53. So the 2.30 to do now, I'm not too good. We play what we call on for safe kick, try to kick at the corner. I think all of them used to do that. It should be good. You used to do that better than anyone. You could go right next to him. <clears throat> and they're still firing. If one of the firing that short, well, I'm not going to worry too much. Then we just look back to the other eye formation. Then they slip back. Then they slip back to the before they can get five men out in a hurry. Back's coming out of the backfield. See him coming out of the backfield now, both of them. So he doesn't have any protection. He does a good job. He's in the back out, of course. Don't have the protection. Normally speaking, when the linebackers come, the backs are staying and blocking. So they're kicking this time. As caught by Ricky Tucker. Actually, we should let the ball hit. Not taking any kind of chance. Had a nice block then over there by Mark Nix, I believe. Fine run by Adam Gray. Adam Gray from Tampa, Florida. They're on the championship team down there. 
You can stitch out this time. Then I'll call. Then I'll start running down the sideline. Then he will give you 110 percent of the day. I'll tell you that. Full out backfield again, tight end. He was the last play of the ball. He kept the ball. So very happily, Alabama, at least I'm very happy over it, wound up with 26 and Georgia Tech 3. And a week off and then Ole Miss. When we Southerners get together, it's a special way of being together, a time when hospitality really shines through. That's why we want the food to be so special, from the garden fresh vegetables to the Golden Flake potato chips. Oh, yes, Golden Flake makes real Southern potato chips, crisp and light. Golden Flake's the only chips with Southern fried crunch. If you serve Southern hospitality at your table, serve Golden Flake potato chips, the only chips with Southern fried crunch. I'm walking into the kitchen. Now, open up the refrigerator door. And I look way in the back. Back behind the mayonnaise. I spy me an icy bottle of Coke. And I pops it open. When that ice cold Coke hits the back of my throat. A Coke and a smile makes me feel good. Makes me feel nice. I have a Coke and a smile. Now that's the real thing. <laughs> Call your local Farm Bureau agent for an up-to-date insurance appraisal of your home and other properties. Full Farm Bureau insurance coverage, plus savings up to 25% and maybe more, relieves anxiety. Be smart. See or call your Farm Bureau agent. Your neighbor has. Hi, everybody. I'm Sam the Clown, and I'm here to tell these boys and girls and all of you about the Northeast Alabama State Fair. This year, the fair is from September 22nd to the 27th. All of your favorite rides and attractions will be there, along with many more special events. Some of these events will include a tractor pull, you stay, and day night. And my good friend Zippy the Chimp will be there, too. Don't forget Mini Madness Tuesday night and Midnight Madness Friday night. The fair is sponsored by the Huntsville JCs and is located at the fairgrounds on Highway 72. WAAY-TV, Channel 31, Huntsville.